you also write that clearly such an entity would be capable of solving very difficult problems very fast, but it is not trivial to figure out how fast. Two extreme positions both seem false to me. So the singularity is on the one extreme and the opposite on the other extreme. Can you describe each of the extremes? Yeah. And so, why? So yeah, let's let's describe the extreme. So like one one extreme would be, well, look, um, you know, uh, if we look at kind of evolutionary history, like there was this big acceleration where, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years, we just had like, you know, single celled organisms and then we had mammals and then we had apes and then that quickly turned to humans. Humans quickly built industrial civilization. And so this is going to keep speeding up and there's no ceiling at the human level. Once models get much, much smarter than humans, they'll get really good at building the next models. And, you know, if you write down like a simple differential equation, like this is an exponential. And so what's, what's going to happen is that uh, models will build faster models, models will build faster models, and those models will build, you know, nanobots that can like take over the world and produce much more energy than you could produce otherwise. And, and so if you just kind of like solve this abstract differential equation, then like five days after we, you know, we build the first AI that's more powerful than humans, then, then, uh, you know, like the world will be filled with these AIs and every possible technology that could be invented, like will be invented. Um, I'm caricaturing this a little bit. Um, uh, but I, you know, I think that's one extreme. And the reason that I think that's not the case is that one, I think they just neglect like the laws of physics. Like it's only possible to do things so fast in the physical world. Like some of those loops go through, you know, producing faster hardware. Um, uh, it takes a long time to produce faster hardware. Things take a long time. There's this issue of complexity. Like, I think no matter how smart you are, like, you know, people talk about, oh, we can make models of biological systems that'll do everything the biological systems. Look, I think computational modeling can do a lot. I did a lot of computational modeling when I worked in biology, but like just there are a lot of things that you can't predict how they're, you know, they're, they're complex enough that like just iterating, just running the experiment is going to beat any modeling, no matter how smart the system doing the modeling is. Well, even if it's not interacting with the physical world, just the modeling is going to be hard. Yeah, I think, well, well the modeling is going to be hard and getting the model to, 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 to match the physical world is going to be hard. All right. So it does have to interact yeah, with the physical yeah, world yeah. to verify. But, but it's just, you know, you, you just look at even the simplest problems. Like, I, you know, I think I talk about like, you know, the three body problem or simple chaotic prediction, like, you know, or, or like predicting the economy. It's really hard to predict the economy two years out. Like maybe the case is like, you know, normal, you know, humans can predict what's going to happen in the economy the next quarter. Or they can't really do that. Maybe, maybe a AI system that's, you know, a zillion times smarter can only predict it out a year or something instead of, instead of, a, you know, you have these kind of exponential increase in computer intelligence for linear increase in, in, in ability to predict. Same with, again, like, you know, biological molecules, molecules interacting. You don't know what's going to happen when you perturb a, when you perturb a complex system, you can find simple parts in it. If you're smarter, you're better at finding these simple parts. And then I think human institutions, human institutions are just, are, are really difficult. Like it's, you know, it's, it's been hard to get people. I won't give specific examples, but it's been hard to get people to adopt even the technologies that we've developed, even ones where the case for their efficacy is very, very strong. Um, you know, people have concerns. They think things are conspiracy theories. Like it's, it's just been, it's been very difficult. It's also been very difficult to get, you know, very simple things through the regulatory system. Right. I think, you know, and, you know, I, I don't want to disparage anyone who, you know, you know, wor works in, in regulatory, regulatory systems of any technology. There are hard trade-offs they have to deal with. They have to save lives, but, but the system as a whole, I think, makes some obvious trade-offs that are very far from maximizing human welfare. And so if we bring AI systems into this, you know, into these human systems, often the level of intelligence may just not be the limiting factor, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it just may be that it takes a long time to do something. Now, if the AI system... Uh, circumvented all governments. If it just said, I'm dictator of the world and I'm going to do whatever, some of these things it could do. Again, the things having to do with complexity, I, I, I still think a lot of things would take a while. I don't think it helps that the AI systems can produce a lot of energy or go to the moon. Like 
Some people in comments responded to the essay saying the AI system can produce a lot of energy and smarter AI systems. That's missing the point. That kind of cycle doesn't solve the key problems that I'm talking about here. Um, so I think I think a bunch of people missed the point there. But even if it were completely unaligned and you know could get around all these human obstacles, it would have trouble. But again, if you want this to be an AI system that doesn't take over the world, that doesn't destroy humanity, then then basically, you know, it's 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 going to need to follow basic human laws, right? We're, we're, you know, if if we want to have an actually good world, like we're going to have to have an AI system that that interacts with humans, not one that kind of creates its own legal system or disregards all the laws or all of that. So, as inefficient as these processes are, w- you know, we're going to have to deal with them because there there needs to be some popular and democratic legitimacy in how these systems are rolled out. We can't have a small group of people who are developing these systems say this is what's best for everyone, right? I think it's wrong, and I think in practice it's not going to work anyway. So you put all those things together, and you know we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna you know change the world and upload everyone in five minutes. Uh, it's I I I just I don't think I, I a a I don't think it's going to happen, and b to some in, in you know to, to the extent that it could happen, it's it's not the way to lead to a good world. So that's on one side. On the other side, there's another set of perspectives, which I have actually in some ways more sympathy for, which is, look, we've seen big productivity increases before, right? You know, economists are familiar with studying the productivity increases that came from the computer revolution and internet revolution. And generally, those productivity increases were underwhelming. They were less than you than you might imagine. Um, there was a quote from Robert Solo. You see the computer revolution everywhere except the productivity statistics. So why is this the case? People point to the structure of firms, the structure of enterprises, how um, uh, you know how slow it's been to roll out our existing technology to very poor parts of the world, which I talk about in the essay, right? How do we get these technologies to the poorest parts of the world that are behind on cell phone technology, computers, medicine, let alone you know newfangled AI that hasn't been invented yet? Um, so you could have a perspective that's like, well, this is amazing technically, but it's all a nothing burger. Um, uh, you know, I think um, Tyler Cowen, who who wrote something in response to my essay, has that perspective. I think he thinks the radical change will happen eventually, but he thinks it'll take fifty or a hundred years. And and you could have even more static perspectives on the whole thing. I think there's some truth to it. I think the time scale is just is just too long. Um, and and I can see it. I can actually see both sides with today's AI. So, uh, you know, a lot of our customers are large enterprises who are used to doing things a certain way. Um, I've also seen it in talking to governments, right? Those are, those are prototypical, you know, institutions, entities that are slow to change. Uh, but the dynamic I see over and over again is, yes, it takes a long time to move the ship. Yes, there's a lot of resistance and lack of understanding. But the thing that makes me feel that progress will in the end happen moderately fast, not incredibly fast, but moderately fast, is that you talk to what I find is I find over and over again, again, in large companies, even in governments, um, which have been actually surprisingly forward leaning, uh, you find two things that move things forward. One, you find a small fraction of people within a company, within a government who really see the big picture who see the whole scaling hypothesis, who understand where AI is going, or at least understand where it's going within their industry. And there are a few people like that within the current within the current US government who really see the whole picture. And, and those people see that this is the most important thing in the world until so they agitate for it. And the thing, they, they alone are not enough to succeed because they're a small set of people within a large organization. But as the technology starts to roll out, as it succeeds in some places, in the folks who are most willing to adopt it, the specter of competition gives them a wind at their backs because they can point within their large organization. They can say, look, these other guys are doing this, right? You know, one bank can say, look, this newfangled hedge fund is doing this thing. They're going to eat our lunch. In the US, we can say, we're afraid China is going to get there before, before we are. Uh, and that combination, the specter of competition, plus a few visionaries within these, you know, within these the organizations that in many ways are, are sclerotic, you put those two things together and it actually makes something happen. I mean, it's interesting. It's a balanced fight between the two because inertia is very powerful. But 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 eventually, over enough time, 
the innovative approach breaks through. Um, and I've seen that happen. I've seen the arc of that over and over again. And it's like the, the barriers are there. The, the barriers to progress, the complexity, not knowing how to use the model, how to deploy them are there. And, and for a bit, it seems like they're going to last forever, like change doesn't happen. But then eventually change happens and always comes from a few people. I felt the same way when I was an advocate of the scaling hypothesis within the AI field itself and others didn't get it. It felt like no one would ever get it. It felt like, then it felt like we had a secret almost no one ever had. And then a couple of years later, everyone has the secret. And so I think that's how it's going to go with deployment to AI in the world. It's going to, the, the barriers are going to fall apart gradually and then all at once. And so I think this is going to be more, and this is just an instinct. I could, I could easily see how I'm wrong. I think it's going to be more like 10, five or 10 years, as I say in the essay, than it's going to be 50 or hundred years. I also think it's going to be five or 10 years more than it's going to be, you know, five or 10 hours, uh, uh, because I've just, I've just seen how human systems work. And I think a lot of these people who write down these differential equations, who say AI is going to make more powerful AI, who can't understand how it could possibly be the case that these things won't, won't change so fast. I think they don't understand these things.